Research is the primary key we have to unlock the potential of tomorrow. The potential of ideas, people and societies. My name is Peter Wallenberg Jr. and I am the chairman of the Knut and Alice Wallenberg Foundation and part of the fifth generation of the Wallenberg family. The Wallenberg Foundation formed the second largest private research foundation in Europe with grants totaling over $300 million annually. Our primary focus is within the fields of medicine, technology and the natural sciences. But we also support social sciences and humanities. That's where we are today. But to understand how we got here, we need to go back in time, about a hundred years. It all started with my great-great-grandfather, Andre Oskar. In 1856, he started the first private branch bank in Sweden, today known as SEB. The mission was to support companies emerging during the Industrial Revolution with growth capital. During the recession of the 1870s, the bank decided to actively engage in turning around some of the companies facing difficulties. This is when the active ownership model was established. In 1917, my great-great-uncle Knut, together with his wife Alice, created the Knut and Alice Wallenberg Foundation with the purpose of providing grants to Swedish research and education. Today, the Wallenberg Foundation includes some 20 non-profit private foundations established by other members of the family. So, on the one end, we have the Wallenberg Foundations. Assets from the foundations are invested through FAM and Investor in leading Swedish-based companies. The dividends distributed from these holdings then go back into the research community. And the research ultimately has an impact on the companies and society in the form of innovative ideas, products and services. A lot has happened over the past hundred years. But with the overwhelming amount of change the world has gone through, the philosophy of the foundations has remained. Since then, the foundations have donated more than $3 billion to research and scholarship programs. Today, there are three primary convictions that steer the decision-making process. The first one is excellence. Excellence is about breaking new ground and moving forward, even through uncertainty or the risk of failure. We support excellent, basic research, since we believe that curiosity-driven research is the basis for major breakthroughs in science. Over the past few years, the Knut and Alice Wallenberg Foundation has been instrumental in funding groundbreaking research. I'll give you two examples. The Max4 laboratory that provides X-rays of the highest intensity and quality making the invisible visible, and research at the Wallenberg Wood Science Center that focuses on enabling the creation of new products from Swedish forests by exploding more from the wood. We also provide donations to individuals, either Wallenberg Scholars or Wallenberg Academy Fellows, who are driving excellence within their respective fields. And this leads us to our second conviction, our belief in the strength of the individuals. We believe that the research that has the greatest impact comes through the skills and talents of the best people. Some of those people are represented through the Wallenberg Academy Fellows, where over five years we are donating 1.2 billion Swedish kronas in funding to some 125 young scientists. Our scholars and fellows are given absolute freedom to conduct their research on their own terms. Our final conviction is represented in an old-fashioned Swedish word, Landskangelig. It's a hard word to say, but the meaning is quite simple. It means that the donations made by the foundations go to research that provides for the betterment of Sweden. Sweden is a small piece of a very large world puzzle, and yet we are interwoven in a global environment without boundaries. To remain competitive, the foundations strive to increase the global mobility of knowledge and experience. That's why we fund young Swedish scientists to study at leading institutions around the world and why we invite the best Swedish researchers back to Swedish soil. We also attract world-leading researchers from other countries 
to take part in projects based in Sweden. That's what Landskandelit means. So how do we find these people? 150 international experts, including Nobel Committee members and Nobel Prize laureates, are involved in the annual review process of the project, universities, institutions and individuals applying for grants. Our scientific operations are headed up by Professor Joran Sandberg, and we use an international advisory board of Nobel Prize laureate to safeguard our own excellence. So there we have the three convictions, excellence, individuals, and Landsgangelit. Let's meet a few of the individuals who bring all of this to life. Research in my lab is focused on chronic pain. And chronic pain is a bigger problem than, than you may think. About one out of five adults in Sweden, Europe, US are uh, suffering from chronic pain. And it can have a major impact on a person's uh, quality of life and health. We are particularly interested in pain and rheumatic disease such as in osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis. And we believe that if we uh, can increase our understanding of how the inflammatory environment in the joint can affect uh, pain fibers, we will have a better chance of uh, developing new pain-relieving drugs. I work with plastic materials that are electronic in its nature. The idea is to take these plastics into formulations so that I can print those on ordinary papers. My goal is to make electronics on paper and on plastic foils. This is a, an integrated uh, sensor platform, biosensor platform, and this uh, includes a sensor display, and on the back side, you can see that it also includes uh, uh, driving circuitry, silicon chip, and a battery. And together, this comprises a sensor that we can uh, print, manufacture entirely using printing technologies, and distribute heavily in the society. The idea is to uh, collect uh, data of our health status and try to combat diseases at a very, very early state in order to make us much more healthier in the future. We also foresee that uh, electronics added onto paper will generate new industry, and we have all, already, since the last 15 years, spun out a few companies here in the region and uh, already today we have a few products on the market and we hope that this is a start of a new boom and a new era for electronics. I'm trying to understand what the fundamental building blocks of the matter that makes up us and everything around us actually are and also which are the forces of nature that govern the world. So I think this is a really fascinating subject because it pushes the limits of the truly unknown. In particle physics we try to answer the big questions like how does the universe work and how did it come about to look the way that it does. Uh, and we do this by exploring nature at levels that are uh, unmatched by other fields. For example, we study the universe at the highest energies, the smallest scales and the earliest times. And the reasons that we do this is because there is still so much about the universe that we don't know. For instance, we only know what about 5% of the content of the universe actually is. The remaining 95% is something that we normally refer to as dark matter and dark energy, but that we still do not know the origin of. I use data from uh, the ATLAS experiment at CERN's Large Hadron Collider to try to find evidence for new heavy exotic particles that could, for instance, explain the origin of the dark matter. And if succeeding, that would bring us one step closer to understanding what the universe is actually made of. We can never truly know what the future will bring us, but one thing is for certain. We will never know unless we try. We are privileged to be part of this quest for knowledge, for understanding and for pushing the boundaries of what can be achieved. And the possibilities are endless. <laughs>